Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Sunday, Sunday, September 29th and the energies in the day adds up or induce to number one vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. When I got to today's energy, I don't know why. Um, so yesterday I felt so free. You know, just everything felt like it was just flowing so free. And when I got to today's energy, all of a sudden I felt a few changes within my body. And the changes that I felt within my body made me feel like, you know, when you brace yourself for something, you know, it's like dealing with not necessarily anxiety, but it's like because I'm very observant with my body because I'm always like scanning and present with every ache, every itch, everything that I'm feeling, it's like immediately I felt this stiffness in the left side of my neck between my shoulder and my neck. And to me, it, it feels like um, today's energy, something tense about it. And I mean, I didn't even look, you guys, at the planets to see where the moon is, even though today is ruled by the sun's energy. And the sun conjuncts um, the sun conjuncts Mercury in Libra and is squaring Mars in Cancer. So something about who we identify as and the way we're communicating is in conflict when it comes to how we're motivated secretly. Or maybe when I look at the square between um, Libra and Cancer, I think of how we'll be super social and friendly, but at the same time, it's like it, 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 it's like being so friendly or being so social or open in a way that it could violate or create conflict when it comes to our living space or our safe space. I think of how with Libra energy, a lot of the times, um, say if you come across a Libra person or a person with strong Libra or Venus energy in a service environment, if you don't know any better, you'll think that they're your friend and they're not your friend. They're just being nice or maybe kind is the word because number one, it's their job. And number two, they don't like conflict or de wanting to deal with the conflict, the opposition or the drama. And something about who we identify as and the word we're communicating today gives off the vibe that we're a lot more open than we may feel. And with that squaring Mars in Cancer, I think of like someone coming off in a way that is the, in a way that makes people think that they're more open than they really are and then from coming off in a certain way it creates this like it it, it it invades privacy or security in a way so yes there's something about the way how one is coming off today that could be easily misunderstood so say you're out about or you're having a conversation or you're connecting with others it's like something about the way you're coming off feels like it's like it's like i'm coming off in a way that you know, I like to have a good time and make people feel good, but at the same time, it's sending the wrong message is what I would get from that, from the energy in today. Whereas like there's some kind of a misunderstanding. And with the moon and the moon and Virgo, so I looked and the moon was in Virgo and the moon, with the moon being in Virgo, it explained like the tenseness that I felt in my body as with the moon and Virgo, our inner world is in a place where we're just way too critical way too critical of ourselves and everybody else and it just feels justified because us being super critical of others in our minds um especially when you have strong virgo placements whether it's planets in the sixth house or virgo sun moon or rising or planets in virgo it's like it's out of helping but really most of the time it's projecting our insecurities on others 
and wanting to help them, but really it's ourselves that we want to help in them most of the time. And with today's energy, the moon in Virgo positively aspects Venus in Scorpio. So with the aspect being made from Virgo um, to Scorpio brings me, <laughs> excuse me, Scorpio energy being private, secretive, hidden, moon and Virgo, it's like justifying, you know, moon and Virgo, super critical, justifying the need for all of that scorpionic stuff. And with um, Virgo, with the moon in Virgo is also squaring Uranus in Taurus. And with the square between the moon and Virgo and Uranus and Taurus, it brings, I, I could see now why I felt whatever I felt in my body. And it's because with Uranus and Taurus in retrograde, say for example, um, today's a day where you look on the news and you see like there's issues about, med about medicine and healthcare issues about insurance, issues about education, issues about the banking system. With Uranus and Taurus, it's like Uranus energy is innovative energy. And in order to be innovative, there is a rebellion that has to happen where all things Taurus is concerned. So that's where the education system, the food system, financial system, all of the tangible systems that govern our earth create comfort and things that we value, Uranus is pretty much reconstructing, renovating, transforming all of that. So it has to be different from what we've always known it to be by the time Uranus is done transiting Taurus, because we will have to rebel against what was in order to be innovative and create something new. So on a normal day, based on the aspects being made to Uranus, we might feel optimistic about these changes, where with our sun, and Mercury in Libra and then Pluto retrograde in Capricorn, there is a level of optimism about these changes. But with the moon, the inner world and in Virgo, there's anxiety about these changes. Like for the first time or not the first time, but say most days you're optimistic about how you could leave, leave your job and you know, collaborate with them over there and do this, that, or the next. It's like, you know, optimistic and have these different ideas of how to make things happen. But, you know, today is the day with the moon and Virgo where it's like, but how am I going to make this happen? How am I going to make that happen? It's like not having enough experience with the plans of the future in order to feel safe about them is what I would get with the moon at early degrees in Virgo, squaring Uranus and Taurus at you know late de Uranus at late degrees in Taurus so when it comes to the t the spirit animal we have the butterfly and the butterfly brings me to a change of mind like I think of butterfly dealing with the air element and when I think of the butterfly I think of how the butterfly goes from the caterpillar into the butterfly and in order to go from the caterpillar into the butterfly the caterpillar had to spend its time eating and then flows you know spend this time eating enough to transform into the butterfly so when it comes to today's energy it brings me to the thought of like say someone stuck in obsessing over information 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 and it's like when are you going to pull the trigger when are you going to go ahead and just do it it's like you know obsessing over certain information forever Okay, so what I mean by that is um, I think of like with the caterpillar eating the leaves in order to, you know, uh, get enough of what it needs in order to, you know, transform. I think of like, say, with Virgo energy, moon and Virgo, or if you're someone here who have strong Virgo placement, whether you have a planet there or planets in the sixth house, you'll find that when it comes to certain things you're interested in, you'll feel like you don't know enough. No matter how much you learn, you don't know enough. And from feeling like that, it'll keep you stagnant to where it's like you're just stuck in the caterpillar stage of consuming information opposing to transforming to the butterfly. Where for me, what helped me um, to put myself out there with my Virgo rising was and planets in Virgo was to tell myself that I like I can't be wrong for sharing with you guys my experience. So everything I share here is my experience based on the planets, my experience based on the numbers. You know, I consume the information, I own it within me, and I share my own experience with you, opposed to, you know, 
I'm all for reading books and learning, but opposed to going and regurgitating other people's stuff back to you. I develop personal experiences with the cards, with everything. And it's like you do the same when it comes to whatever interests you have. Like with Virgo energy, we're afraid of being wrong. So because we're afraid of being wrong, we stay stuck, we stay stuck, stagnant. We stay in the apprenticeship position forever. And it has to come to a point where you realize that you know all you need to know to, to step out. You know all you need to know to take a chance on yourself. So when it comes to today's energy, today's energy has to do with new beginnings because the energies in the day adds up reduced to number one vibration. And the sun energy is so amplified today because Sunday is associated with the sun and the energies in the day adding up and reducing to a number one vibration also ties into the sun energy. But with the day being the 29th, that's what creates that turbulent energy within the day because the number two is nurturing, emotional, caring, sensitive, unifying. And the number nine deals with humanity and both the number nine and the number two energy could be codependent energy, could be energies that come off a bit dependent out of fear of change or being alone, standing alone. And then two plus nine is 11. And with the number 11 energy, the number one is amplified. So this is where we have a bunch of great ideas and thoughts, but they never leave from being ideas and thoughts. You know, the discipline that's necessary in order to materialize them into something tangible might be what's missing or the confidence and the self-worth, the belief in oneself might be missing when it comes to materializing our thoughts, our goals, our and our dreams and our, our ideas into something tangible might be missing because with the number one energy, if it doesn't see an example of itself in the world, it doesn't feel safe. So this is where if we don't see an example of our ideas, we'll, with the number 11 energy, we'll refurbish what is, which is great. But at the same time, that original thing within you sh deserves to live, deserves to be experienced by others because we're just channels. And based on our insecurities, you know, we stop the energies from flowing through us, thinking that we own the creation when we're we're just the channel. We're just the channel. When it comes to the tarot, okay, so boom, we have the 10 of pentacles in the upright position. So when it comes to today's energy, I love that the 10 of pentacles energy comes out because it brings me to being at the end of a cycle. It's like being brave enough to have the ambition or take action. And from that being at the end of a cycle. So when it comes to say today's energy, know that you're at the end of a cycle. Know that you're finishing up some cycle and allowing yourself to flow into this new cycle, into this new world, into this new experience. Yeah, and like I said, today is ruled by the sun and with the sun energy, um, the sun in Libra conjunct, the sun in Libra conjunct Mercury opposes Neptune in retrograde and Pisces. And with the opposition, it brings me to coming to a mutual space when it comes to, say, your time alone and your time with others. And with the opposition, there's a push and pull and not a proper balance between time alone and time with others. And when we um, ignore or neglect our time alone, and when I say time alone, I don't mean time alone that's spent scrolling um, mindlessly or consuming um, content, but time alone quietly, maybe you're quiet, you know, you drive to work, you know, you might spend your time alone every now and then by driving to work with no music or going on your walk with nothing and just allow your thoughts to flow in your head, but bring your attention to nature and how your legs feel hitting the pavement and how the sun feels hitting your skin. But you bring your attention and ground yourself into the tangible aspects of your experience and allow thoughts to flow, inspiration to come in. And, you know, from doing that, like, you know, that's time alone and you get downloads, you get new visions and inspirations and premonitions. 
So that's very important. And I feel like when we're open to that and we support that aspect of ourselves, then when we show up in our connections and we relate to others, we relate to others in a, from a space that's authentic because we spend enough time with ourselves to check in with ourselves, to know what we like, what we don't like, what feels good from, from what don't feels good. So when it comes to the opposition, you know, it brings me to coming to uh, 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 the center of the opposition where it's like you spend enough time and reflection with yourself and even when you're with others, you still reflect, meaning, you know, something was said and you notice it made you feel a way and you question, why do I feel the way I feel? Oh, I didn't appreciate, you know, them saying or doing what they did. So, you know, if it's a connection that's worth building on, then you address it so they understand you more and know what you like as you would want to know what they like as long as what they like, you know, doesn't invade in your you know doesn't go against your boundaries same with your likes and needs and interests doesn't go against their boundaries but you know communication expression is important and choosing ourselves putting ourselves first is important also because when we're taking good care of ourselves then we can take even better care of the people that we care about so when it comes to that opposition today in today's energy it brings me to finding a common ground and don't get so lost in other people's energy hey guys i want to share with you seven benefits of getting a numerology natal chart awareness coaching session the first one is understanding your internal programming the second one is becoming more clear about your purpose and passion the third is setting goals for success the fourth is awareness of strength and areas of improvement and the fourth one was foundational for me because whenever you're aware of your weaknesses no one can use them against you and when you're aware of your strengths that makes you unstoppable and that is why i say self-awareness is a superpower the fifth benefit is removing obstacles. We first have to become aware of a thing in order to remove it in the first place. The sixth benefit is understanding relationship dynamics. We don't have to change the people in our lives. We have to become aware of ourselves and start from there and everything changes. And the seventh benefit is upcoming transits. If that's something that you would like to look into because you're planning for something or you just want to be aware so if you're interested in booking a numerology nail chart awareness coaching session or learning more about it the link to book or the link to send me an email for questions or both within the description box below if you'd like to check out my patreon where i share exclusive content the link to check out what's happening on patreon is in the description box below it was such a pleasure sharing this message with you. Before you go anywhere, please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a red heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.